Today, we cover the man with the snacks desk, Takado Maruki from Persona 5 Royal. Following the events of the Kamashida incident, Shujin needed a way to save the school's reputation, so they brought in the good doctor with the juice box. With that, here are my reasons why Dr. Maruki is snacks material. On first impressions, he comes across as a rather handsome and mature looking man. Isn't he hot? And he sounds good too. It's nice to meet you all. Whoa, his voice is sexy. Appearance wise, he's got the professional look going on, wearing a white lab coat on top of his collared shirt and pants combo. However, he also adds a sense of casualness by adding in a loosened tie and those epic sandals. Similar to Joker, he's rocking that shaggy haircut and glasses look as well, sharing the very same struggles when placed in front of a hot bowl of food. Ooh, this aroma's really triggered my appetite. Too bad I can't see anything now. Speaking of food, Dr. Maruki's a pretty good cook, bringing out his inner salt bay. Oh, you're an amazing chef. I do cook pretty often at home. Let me try this little technique here. What the? Why is the wind salty? Uh, sorry. The way he introduces himself pretty much sums up his personality as a kind of casual guy looking to help others. And he's quite the comedian too. My name is Takato Maruki. Thank you for welcoming me to your school. <laughs> I guess I'm not really any good for helping with money problems. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Maruki. During school days, Dr. Maruki can usually be found in the nurse's office, where he lend an ear to any student. Starting with An, with a close connection to the Kamashida case, she's actually the first one to visit Dr. Maruki, where they discuss some of the events of the incident and her wishes to restore her friendship with Shiho. Afterwards, she convinces the rest of the crew to come in for counseling sessions. Next up, we have our favorite punk, Ryuji, who comes in quite strong due to his negative stance on teachers. However, Maruki convinces him that he's here on behalf of the students. While searching for a random topic to discuss, Maruki questions Ryuji of any high school crushes, which is kind of weird seeing that he's never experienced such a thing, leading to a bit of an awkward moment. Anyway, the rest of the conversation revolves around Ryuji's injury and his love for track. As the conversation ends, Dr. Maruki gives some advice to Ryuji about wishing hard on his dreams. As a way to prove it, he even asks Ryuji what he wants most out of life right now. And being the big brain monkey that he is, he wishes for a drink, which gains quite the reaction from Maruki. As luck would have it, he actually won a coupon for some apple juice that very morning, thus offering it to Ryuji. Ryuji then returns the favor by describing Dr. Maruki as not normal. Feigning it to be a compliment, we see her what a savage Ryuji is. In the case of Makoto, she was encouraged to come in for a counseling session, but claims she came on her own volition, where she actually ends up taking the initiative. Despite being the perfect honor roll student, Makoto shares her shortcomings and admits about her need for a support group, which Dr. Maruki approves of. Now with Haru, she was a little timid at first, but eased up when she thought about the whole thing as tea time. The two simply discuss about her family's work comes first mentality, along with uptight behavior and formal events. Heck, Dr. Maruki even got the attention of Yusuke, who doesn't even go to Shujin Academy, who makes his interest very clear from the beginning. The two end up in a makeshift counseling session, at first discussing about Yusuke's past with Madarami and the philosophical side of guiding people. Early in the story, Joker agrees to attend the counseling sessions to help Dr. Maruki with his research. In exchange, he gives us some mental training, resulting in those useful SP right. pieces, as well as the actual snacks that he keeps talking about. The research we help him with has to do with the topic of cognitive sciences, something which Futaba is very familiar with. As we approach the end of his term at Shujin Academy, we realize that Dr. Maruki has really made quite an impact on his students. Dr. Maruki! <laughs> As a way to thank Joker for all the help, Dr. Maruki went and bought some fancy tempura bowls. These tempura bowls are from a restaurant I've been curious about since I first came to the school. I'd always passed on it due to the price, but today is special. Not only that, I ordered the deluxe bowls for us. At the end of this meal, Dr. Maruki proves once again that everyone and their mother knows about Joker's secret identity. Allow me to express my gratitude to you once more as a most helpful student of Shujin. And as a phantom thief as well. Phantom thief. The phantom thief. Phantom thief. Phantom thief. While the school has changed for the better under Dr. Maruki's guidance, let's just say some things never change. <laughs> for this final segment, major spoilers coming up. Nearly 100 hours into the game, everything starts to look like it's about to end the same way. Except, well... I'd like for you to turn yourself into the police, of your own accord. 
There's no need for that. You. If they get their hands on the perpetrator, there'll be no need for him to turn himself in, no? Next thing we know, we wake up in a world where everybody's wishes come true. Morgana is now human, Ryuji's leg isn't broken, and even the people who were once dead are now alive. Huh. In this new world, we quickly find out that the stadium has now transformed into a palace, and the owner is none other than Dr. Maruki, except he's now dressed in all white with slicked back hair. As the story progresses, we learn about his godlike powers to change reality, as well as his tragic origin story. Inside one of the videotapes found at the palace, we find a young Dr. Maruki talking to his girlfriend Rumi, who is currently traumatized by the murder of her parents. In a desperate attempt to save her from this, Dr. Maruki awakens to his power and erases Rumi's trauma. However, this comes at a steep price. Who... who are you? Rumi, it's me! Um, I'm really sorry, but I don't know who you are. Rumi, what do you mean? At some point in the story, Dr. Mariki gives us an ultimatum on whether to join this new world or not. Honestly, this one made me think quite a lot, because the quote unquote bad ending doesn't sound so bad. Just make sure you actually pick something, instead of letting the timer run out, because that ending is just plain sad. Portraying Joker to sleep endlessly, forgotten by everyone. Looks like Morgana won this one. On the other hand, if we do accept the deal, we suddenly find ourselves in the middle of a party with all our favorite friends, including Kasumi and Akechi. As we fast forward through several weeks, we find ourselves during Haru and Makoto's graduation day. To no one's surprise, Kasumi shows up to the ceremony, but the weird part is seeing Akechi being nice and stuff, offering to take a photo of the group. Not wanting to leave the pancake boy out of the picture, we hear a familiar voice. Would you rather I take that for you? You're all friends, right? Okay, ready? Say cheese. This kind stranger then walks off, leaving an eerie feeling with Joker. <laughs> so anyway, in the credits we get treated to some wonderful images of everyone living their best lives. At the end of this, we get this wonderful image of the group having fun, while Joker and Akechi seem like they know something. So if you do decide to go with the true ending, you'll need to fight the multiple phases of Dr. Maruki. Wearing golden armor, he summons some kind of tentacle monster with differing weaknesses on each leg. Next up, he summons this giant being and merges with it. However, with the power of friendship, the crew manages to dispatch the giant. Overall, Dr. Maruki isn't such a bad guy and always had the good intentions from the very beginning. Having admitted his defeat, he requests for one last fight to vent out any of his regrets. <laughs> During the ending cutscene, the crew realizes that they're being followed. A mysterious cab then shows up, and just so happens to be Dr. Murky at the wheel. Agreeing to split up, Dr. Murky gives Joker a ride to the train station, free of charge, thus ending our journey with him with a certified bro fist. So what do you think about Dr. Maruki? Would you want to accept living in his dream world? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment on Dr. Maruki, our favorite stack supplying counselor.